A leader is the one who is amongst the people. A leader is not the one who stands out and leads. You lead by example. It is my responsibility to take care of my own men's problem. It is not that I am having a good time with my girlfriend, I can't attend to your work. Sorry. I need to. And I need to address your problem at that particular time. So my very dear friend, second left in SV Kumar, God bless his soul, is no more. We joined our units on the 10th of January 1993. 11th of January got a bullet right between his eyes. The essence of the core of engineers is we are the first ones to walk into any war and the last ones to come out of it. You uh, need to have a good mentor who can inspire you, from whom you can talk your heart out. Crisis management, negotiation, and consensus building. He has a strong experience in risk assessment, financial planning, performance analysis, quantity management and lead engineering teams for higher efficiency and buffer. He has connected instructional tenure in prestigious training institutions and served as military observer in multinational environment in the United Nations. A DIPR qualified officer, Colonel Rakesh is extremely competent in interviewing skills and has conducted numerous recruitment rallies in his career. A keen fitness enthusiast, Colonel Mishra is a cyclist par excellence, a regular gym goer, runner, and a keen sportsman. He has represented the services in cricket and the army in the intra competitive level in football. He has the coveted honor of being the officer in charge of the Republic Day Parade contingent of the Madras Sepers in 2003, which won the top. So without any further ado, please help me welcome Colonel Rakesh Mishra on the stage. I would love to call our President Toastmaster Ranjan Ji to welcome Sir with a bouquet. A huge round of applause. My legs are currently actually shaking while sharing the stage with Sir. So Sir, first of all, it's been a pleasure that we are talking today. Thanks. Thank you. Before we move forward, it's been an illustrious career that you have seen so far. Sir. Please walk us through your journey in your own words. Okay. So you already said a lot of funny things. Uh, I don't know, you stole this from the... Uh, that. Your website. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, I am Colonel Rakesh Mishra, you've already told you. I got commissioned uh, in the Indian Army on the 19th of December, 1992. And I took premature retirement in 2020. It is about two and a half years ago, two, uh, two years and three, four months ago. After uh, rendering about 28 years of uh, glorious service to the nation, uh, to the proud Indian Army. I was commissioned into the Corps of Engineers. So, you know, the <clears throat> Army has uh, various wings. So, most of you guys know about special forces. Okay, so. There are many other forces besides these special forces in the army. So yes, I joined the Corps of Engineers. Uh, the, the essence of the Corps of Engineers is we are the first ones to walk into any war and the last ones to come out of it. So when uh, the other day, Arde Kaur, I think Ratanjit or uh, Raj Shekhar or someone was talking to me, hey, sir, why didn't you join the special forces? I said, I'm special myself. <laughs> I'm, I'm the first one to walk into the war, the last one to come out. What, what more speciality do you need from me? Okay. So yes, uh, been there, done that, uh, got commissioned and straight away was thrown into the Northeast. Um, all that you dream of doing and all that you see in movies like Puri and Border, I don't know what now, what, 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 what. Uh, been there, done that, so been. Uh, out of 28 years, uh, 14 years and 2 months I was in the field. As is known to you guys, um, we have field tenures and peace tenures. So I was on the wrong side of the army headquarters most of the time. They kept on posting into the field. <laughs> so jokes apart, but yes, I had my life. Um, <clears throat> uh, been there, been with people, uh, shouldered tremendous amount of responsibilities. Uh, Served in various situations, various units, 
different units uh, had a ball over time. Why I left is a different reason. Why I took premature is a different reason. Uh, but I can just assure you one thing, Hardik, and to the crowd. If I take both again, I think I will join the army again and any number of votes. And I think, sir, itself shows the personality that you carry. Uh, you mentioned two things yes. field tenure and peace tenure. Yes. What do? What is something that you learn only in a field tenure? Vis a vis, what is something that you learn? So, yeah, so field tenure, tenure, you see, um, you have uh, a lot of circumstances thrown at you. You are in bond enforcement places, um, for example, uh, places like Siachen, <coughs> and we have a board placed in such kind of places. You know, have you, I, mean, I don't know how many of you have seen that movie, Where Eagles Dare. It's a very famous old English movie. So we put it as placards there, where eagles also don't dare. <laughs> so, uh, being there in those kind of places, and when you are in that, that kind of place, so there is isolation. You have men to command. Uh, you build resilient teams, you have superb bonding amongst your men. Imagine on your one command is ready to put his life in front of you. I mean, what more to say that the kind of camaraderie, the kind of brotherhood, the kind of feeling for each other that you see in the armed forces, you won't find it anywhere because, because it's your life. And as a leader, it's your responsibility of the men that you're commanding. You're safeguarding the nation, that's the first thing. The men that you're commanding is second. Your own safety is the last that you always uh, look for. And so the field tenures uh, throw up a lot of challenges. Um, there's a lot of isolation. You are not going home. Uh, you are confined to a particular place, probably a particular task, day in and day out. Uh, you need to keep your men motivated. You keep you need to keep yourself motivated at the first place, hence your men are motivated. Um, uh, you keep want to keep them in very good humor. They have all problems. They have families back home. They have parents back home. They have brothers and sisters back home. And as aapki dunya mein, aapki zindagi mein, jab chahe koi problem hoti hai, to hum bhi insan hain, jo field areas mein hote hain, to hamare bhi back home there is a lot of problems. We have to keep aside so many things. We have to build a very good mental strength. So yeah, that are the challenges. And uh, whatever you learn in the peace. So peace time is no easy. So as the saying goes, the more you sweat in peace, the less you bleed in war. Because when you are in field, field is like war. I don't know how many of you have been to Jain. I don't know how many of you have been to the Northeast, where bullets are flying uh, just like that. Uh, you don't even know when you get out of your home that you want to come back in your room and do whatever cozy room that you have. You don't know, you're not sure. So in the peace station, Yes, that is an opportunity to hone up your skills, to sharpen your training skills, because that is what is used finally in the field area, because you don't have that kind of uh, infrastructure, the wherewithal to train yourself in the field. All that you bank upon is in the peace, you train yourself for the war or for the imminent tasks of varied nature that you do in the uh, field stations. So peace tenures have its own challenges wherein uh, with the advent of internet, with the advent of uh, technology, with the advent of your YouTubes and your Instagram and all that, the mind, the younger lot, the soldiers, they generally uh, go a little haywire. Mm -hmm. so need to maintain uh, harmony, need to maintain a lot of discipline, uh, people look for a good uh, settle family life, the challenges of settling your children, uh, settling your family because that's going to be there for another two years and again you're going to be in the field. True. So uh, the acceptance of the civil society of yours because you cannot be in that a frog in the well, you have to move out of the cantonment, you have to put your children outside, mm -hmm. you have to go outside. So that is one place where those kind of challenges are there. Uh, man management, yes. Uh, when you come from the field, so everyone wants to go and leave. Yeah. Uh, obviously, for obvious reasons. True. And there are a whole lot of tasks in the peace station mm. uh, that you need to uh, do. So, your man management skills are at its best. You're going to send on leave, when to call in back. Yeah. People get aggrieved because you got shooting, you're not getting You pet him up, 
uh, you increases moral, you know, there's so, so many uh, these kind of challenges. I think, sir, I recently was listening to CJ's Dhindran sir on the podcast mm -hmm. and he mentioned a similar thing that while uh, in army we talk about all the physical strength and all these things, for a soldier, emotional strength is as much importance, emotional resilience is as much important. Uh, that is hardly the most important. You see, uh, generally the soldier lot, where they come from is um, not so known places. They come from small villages small towns with a dream that they are joining the armed forces mm -hmm. with an army navy or air force and uh, there is a tendency to break down because there is an imbalance. Okay. His own classmate is probably somewhere else, so I might be doing engineering, might be into a corporate, or might be sitting in the four walls of an AC room mm -hmm. and yet posting lovely photographs with his girlfriend. <laughs> Yeah. So there he is right now, mm -hmm. out of 24 hours, perhaps on due to 24 7, 365 days. Absolutely. So sometimes, there again, like I mentioned before, there is emotional uh, factor involved at home. Yeah. Uh, probably once or every day that he speaks, the family people don't say him many things, don't disclose or come out. Mm. But there's a break point of every person. Mm. So he is still carrying that mm. and continuing his duty. So it is very necessary to understand that person's psyche, talk your way through him, appreciate his strengths and weaknesses and carry him through and then care about him, you know. So understanding, appreciating and caring about him, that is how you tackle the emotional stress. Yes, it is there, uh, we will not deny him. that's the reason why you hear about a little bit of suicide and all that kind of thing. Uh, but yes, uh, it's a process, uh, we have body system. For uh, every soldier, there is a buddy. So he is supposed to also be understanding that particular person, mm. his mannerisms, his ways. Mm. Is he down? Is he emotionally low? So he reports back. There's a channel of reporting. So up to the officer when it goes, he comes, he addresses, wow. he sits with him, and there is a that is how the bonding of the camaraderie builds. Okay. So interesting. I think for many of us who are working right now as entrepreneurs or probably in organizations. If you have to just take one takeaway from this session today, it has to be you have to care about your people. Yeah. You have to you have to know them inside out, and that is how you can leave them. Absolutely. I mean, uh, uh, there is a soldier sitting here who just uh, is my student also. All the soldier looks for is and what we want from our soldiers, or what we want from a men. Many of you are are into corporates, and you have your bosses and all that. What is a boss supposed to do? What what is you in your capacity when you have your own team working with you. Mm -hmm. You are supposed to be understanding. Given the strengths and weaknesses that you have, we all have our own strengths and weaknesses. You need to understand that person's weaknesses. What does he like to do? How does he look at the world? What does he appreciate? What he does not appreciate? How is he suiting in the entire ecosystem? Right. Okay. Then you appreciate with his flaws. How is, he be, how is that person going to be useful for the organization, for his family, for the mm -hmm. nation and the world at large? Mm -hmm. See, his own makeshift world. And then, you care about it. Very okay. So that is what in our individual capacities that we need to do with whatever positions that we are. You might be uh, just a, a small team uh, leader and then you're graduating into a little higher scale and then a higher scale. And that is what is deliverance. That is what is resilient team building. That is what is strengthening the bond. And then you get the results because you as one entity hmm. are into the thing together. Right. And that is the feeling that you must give to every person that you are commanding or giving orders or seeking favors or understand. You know, you are asking him to do something for you. Right. You have to give him that confidence that you are in it with him hmm. or with her. No. And I feel that is where uh, there, there has to be a step beyond the performance incentives that you give. There has to be something beyond the bonus or the monetary incentives that you're giving to the person. What else you're giving to the person? So, no, see, understand when you're talking to me as far as incentive, yeah. incentive is my whole being. For you guys, it could be bonuses in terms of paisa. Mm. For, <laughs> for us, it is no paisa. Sorry. Yeah. It is a, I'm giving myself to you, my time, and my whole being is to you. So, 
you i am approachable 24/7 365 whether on leave whether on duty whether on off duty it is my responsibility to take care of my own men's problem it is not that i am having a good time with my girlfriend i can't get into your work sorry i need to and i need to address a problem at that particular time ready to so uh, it see the life of the army or the armed forces differs from the corporate in that particular sense uh, i'm sorry i'm mean, boring my own soldier was sitting here uh, you guys on the materialistic side uh, tend to hinge a little bit you see so that but part of it so on the side the middle we are not on the materialistic side it is wo dil se jo cheeze hoti hain wo dil se karte hain is it so it is not uh, this jawan will only respect you when he knows that saab mere liye khada hai and wo ye nahi dekhta ki saab kitna handsome hai saab dorda ke saab kisi aur ke samne kaisa hai how does he behave is he the same in front back can he is he approachable can i go up to him talk my heart out and can he resolve it and that is the simplest thing that the jawan wants he will lay his life with you. wow that doesn't have a notion true yeah i think so. <laughs> if you guys see uh, i don't know how many of you are uh, recalling it toastmasters communication this is the actual integral part of communication also when how accessible you are how actively you are listening to the people that you are leading with your working with that itself forms a huge part of communication and sir i come from the marketing field yeah. and this is something being taught to us as well that if you don't know your customers weaknesses if you don't know what pinches them what is their pain point you will not be able to solve their pain so i'm actually uh, right now just visualizing two different worlds and yet at the service level they both are at the same leadership you have to talk about the pain point of the person that is the most important thing absolutely see what i mean i can talk about my field which where i served for 28 years it was no you men no your job you tell the time you don't know if say suppose i'm out of the field now you guys are all working under me if i don't know each individual sitting here and i have to get work how will that work be done I, everyone like i said everyone has a skill set i have to make use of your particular best skill set that is how and somebody if on particular things that you if you are found wanting if you are not fulfilling my, somebody else's or i pitch it then so it is not that i am leading a group so i am someone who is aloof a leader is the one who is amongst the people a leader is not the one who stands out and leads you lead by example that's the reason why lead or is there you lead by example you are Uh, we don't talk about politics, but you have certain leaders. We all are going to go about. We will lead by example. So, yeah. Sir, so. so one more question to you: that while we speak of mental strength, and I'm sure a lot of students are standing over there, a lot of corporate guys are standing over there. What are the building blocks of building that mental strength, according to you? Uh, see, uh, mental strength is um, directly related to how self-motivated. how determined are you how uh, dedicated are you in your life in your own capacity how you are, how much are you disciplined so when i talk about self motivation which actually comes it is intrinsic and extrinsic both intrinsic means it happens within your sphere that is your immediate family extrinsic means it is your environment that you move around with so how are you how well motivated determined are you are you fixated on a particular thing and you are you giving your whole soul energies that you have okay mm-hmm. that is uh, going after or gunning after a particular goal that you have in mind uh, today you are uh, having uh, hundred of avenues to go ye kar le ye bhi kar le i was talking to someone i think i was talking to my wife only i said yeah what the hell you see when you ask someone today very fine coinage of terms right mm-hmm. plan a plan b plan c <laughs> and plan z you tell me one thing or plan a if you have the dedication if you have the motivation if you have the determination if you have the die hard hunger to do it coupled up with uh, you know uh, 
knowledge, which mm. is power. Mm. These five things are a must skill set for your wedding plans right also. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. So build these five things for your plan A, your plan B, C, and all the damn good plans are going to take it, get uh, taken care of. Mm -hmm. But if you can't take out, I mean, you have not these particular things, how can you even think about plan B and C? The problem with the present generation is by the time you're into one third into plan A, you drop it, one third into plan B, drop it, and some Tom Dick and Harry comes your way and tells you that plan F is good, follow that, you follow that. <laughs> so, what, where have you done those five intrinsic things for your plan A, which actually suits for every plan? So, I'm not saying going into the arms forces. So, I lead an academy, and I'm not saying that, uh, you know, be a OG. If I would have been the Prime Minister, that's what I would have put everyone. I would have made a for every, everyone who already served in the army for uh, the armed forces for two years. But yes, we are in a most uh, wonderful country. What India? Okay. Where you can open the very car and uh, fun keeping we fix up to you, and nobody is there to check you. <laughs> and when you check, people look at you for <laughs> So, yeah, so uh, see. Uh, Build up your motivations, build up your confidence. But those are the things only you can do it. The best thing is to kick yourself. The best thing is to push yourself every day. It is that couple of seconds, it is that four or five seconds that you need to overcome your mind. You know, when the mind is I very well agree with you, sir. And I think I love that point where you mentioned about plans. Uh, I was recently listening to Rajkumar Rao, and Bollywood actors say something uh, wisely, very sandomly. But he said one very beautiful lines that my plan B is actually to get my plan A successful at any cost. That's so it. that is the only thought, and I love that. Yeah. How so, do, how so that. There is no plan B, C, and D. <laughs> like I said, the same skill set yeah. required for all the others. So every other plan is actually planned. <laughs> I love that. Uh, while we are discussing it, so uh, if you have any questions, because I'm sure you have a lot of questions. So does anybody want to just, they can raise their hand and ask you this. Uh, please. Yeah, please, one. Uh, ladies are not supposed to stand in front of army officers or men. Even I'll stand. Please no. take your seat and I'll ask you this. Sir, it is bad manners on me to sit. No, 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 Have you ever had that fear of death at least once in your oh. life? <laughs> okay. This is obvious. This is an obvious question to approach. So yes, uh, there was not a bullet made which uh, got into me. I was lucky. Are uh, bullet ke upar ek fauji ka naam rehta hai. Wo bullet aapke mere 28 years mein shayad ek feet dursa nikli hogi, shayad do inch dursa nikli hogi. So I was lucky. That's good. Uh, answering to your question, please sir. Answering your question, you know, the day you one decides, uh, where's Raj uh, Yeah, uh, he'll, he'll agree with me my, because he's also faced the interviews. The day um, you decide that you want to join the armed forces, who decides to join the armed forces? How many of you are willing to die? Nobody. Yeah. I think I've answered your question. So the day you join the armed forces, I'll give you a very small example. I was commissioned on the 19th of December, 1992. 
So there's 21 days that you, of leave that you get and you get some units. So my very dear friend, second left in S.V. Kumar, God bless his soul, is no more. We joined our units on the 10th of January 1993. 11th of January got a bullet right between his eyes. So when you join the army, you're not looking for bonuses and incentives. <laughs> <laughs> There's no bonus in the This is the bonus. Because you're willingly joining, fully well knowing what could happen to you. I think I do. the forges deserve a clap for this. <laughs> well within your senses when you know what anything could happen to you. Because like I said, you're being trained for war. When you finish your training, you're going. Like I said to my parents, and I told him in the class today, also, I said, I'm no longer your son. Then my mother said, why? I said, you've taken the courage to send me to the army, that's the first thing, that's the one most wonderful thing. I'm no longer your son, I'm son of the nation. And <laughs> that's the way it has been. I've had so many ups and downs, so many downs. But uh, it's always been my, I mean, one of the pillars of uh, me and been my parents and that look on their face, that twinkle in their eyes is good enough to keep me going again and again. So we, while we are executing, coming back to your question, while we are into the job, uh, you don't think about results first. That death, so you can't perform, you see. You take it as a byproduct. You're going out, you don't think about, oh shit, uh, now I'm walking into uh, the jungle and a bullet could be fired. You never think like that. You, you never perform any duties thinking about the result first. But to, so, fal ki chinta baad mein karo, karo ki chinta pehle. Fal is fine, you joined the army, you know it, knew it. Like another, another thing which I said, the army didn't come to my house to pick me up, I chose to go there. It didn't come to my house, okay, okay please, we require you to safeguard the interests of the nation. <laughs> so when I chose that, I knew the consequences. So when I knew the consequences, I cannot be reminded of the ultimate consequence. Jana sab ko it's okay, what more better than uh, the glory for the country, at least your parents will feel proud about it. After their brother was born in the country, who was born in the country, what do you do in your individual capacities? Whether you are working for any MNC or you, you are furthering the interest of the nations in some field. Okay? Whether it be in industry, whether it be in trade relations, whether it be in any kind of uh, thing. So yes, so uh, uh, you ask any Fauci, he doesn't think about death first. Because he knows the reason why he is there, not to die, but he is willing to die. There's a diff subtle difference between I am wanting to die, it's not, you are not committing suicide. Okay? But it is, you are giving yourself to the nation that, okay, fine, I am ready for any consequences whatsoever that might come, but I am ready for it. It is service before self. Yeah? Mm -hmm. It is not a question, uh, but uh, I would like to appreciate you the kind of control, uh, kind of command over the like ways, over, okay. over the body, okay. and overall, I mean, uh, talking to you or or listening to you, it's a magical or amazing thing. Seriously, uh, I mean, I have not listened uh, so well, so good, so perfect in last one year. Honestly, can you do me a favor? Yeah, sure. Can you call my private and <laughs> Is an army person, an army person in home also, in front of his wife? Oh, you have to go. So no, you see what happens is, uh, we have a question you must ask. Your personality, your process, seriously, I'm telling you, it's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. Yeah, it's not a good thing. 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 Perfect. Oh, that's thanks for your compliment. Yeah, coming through how we are at home. See, like all home ministers, I was your home minister. I saw me, you will take over, pay good to get much under good jacket, and you will be in the house. But yes, so you put across a point to a particular thing, and then she says, okay, enough. 
so yeah so at home yes i had a very 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 bad habit and a very very peculiar habit and my entire family would vouch for it my parents my in-laws also would vouch for it i don't know in morning in these stations especially or in, the, in some field areas of the of families and my wife realized it within a year of getting married to me and my children realized when they came dawned onto the sir 3 uh, 4 years after the marriage that jab ye aadmi uniform pehanta hai iske samne banta so the moment i used to wear my uniform and tie my shoe laces the whole house used to vanish into their separate rooms that was then i am a forgy first and then a husband and a father and a son what up and a son and daughter so i always maintain it you know good life yes give it okay a lot of things i can see uh, let's start with dhirendra because dhirendra is just uh, yeah i agree with you I uh, just uh, like wanted to ask you some serious question. Um, I and my grandfather was serving in the army. Great. Uh, he served. Yeah, he served. He's passed away. Like, okay. Good question. Yeah. So uh, just wanted to ask you about the PTSD thing. Like, what's your take on that? PTSD, post-traumatic uh, stress disorder, with great people. Uh, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. Like, I see my grandfather was suffered uh, from this thing. Of like, after retirement. Yeah, after retirement, like it's been uh, four five years. It was difficult for me. See, I, I understand your question. I, I, uh, the question could not be PTSD as you term, term it. It's about adjusting after you know. Uh, thank you, Guru. Please. So can you explain that first of all to the audience? See, yeah, I, I we don't understand this term, uh, John. Sorry, PTSD, post traumatic stress disorder. Uh, my best way of treating. Is to give a very hard answer. No, no, sorry, uh, but see what it happens when you served in the army. His grandfather was a served for twenty four, twenty five, twenty six years. You have every moment it is forged and forged and forged inside. What happens is when you come out, and armed forces is within the environment of the armed forces. you get love you get affection you get a lot of recognition when you suddenly come out your own family members probably because on the monetary side your pension you have half of the pension um which is good enough to survive but you cannot live obviously so somewhere within the house you start feeling neglected because you suddenly you have no work to do so that is one cause of pity as there um you are what you did when you were wearing the uniform and telling everyone was agreeing to it wo khade ho jaate the same kar karwa rahe the aur aap hi karwa rahe the stand sit stand to jab tak uniform mein the sab maante jaise suddenly aapne uniform kya tha and the dukan aur theek hai ho gaya aapke coach ki ab ho gaya aur aapke ghar pe baitho suddenly you are getting uh not uh, uh i would say people are not adhering to you or not obeying you but they say that ho gaya yaar bahut ho gaya and when you come out to the civil world you expect the civil world to behave exactly as the forgy world was so when you go to a shop to buy, to ask in where about the thing he tells the price first which hits you sala dam pehle pucha tha is cheez ke bare mein dekhta pehle pucha wo cheez ke bare mein nahi bataya bole sir ye 6000 ka hai before you even go into you know touching it or something or you know asking about it so these kind of things so when you are asking someone mm, nobody is hearing you uh, people are uh, talking up aji hai pricey hoga uh, you are seeing someone like i said darwaza khol ke farm ki bhi you are kon hai tu so no you have a uh, you served in the army for so long or the navy or the force you say aji ho to wahi rehna apne ghar pe so you don't you are not habitual of listening to all this kind of things so there is a kind of loneliness and aloofness from the society and that is wherein you don't have people to talk to you can't exchange your view points uh, there is a little bit of uh, reticence from the uh, house itself and hence those post traumatic stress is does uh, this sort you are also reminded of certain uh, life saving things that you've done wherein um, you were you didn't even know whether you will be alive 
but nobody understands it when you have come out of the army. Uh, you tell them I've got a bravery award, you know, bravery medal. So you give. So awareness about what you have done is so less, and you say that shit. Is that the world that I want to come, where there is no acceptance of my mm. my viewpoints? Mm. And that is how you start feeling that this world to live in is a very wretched world. It is it is not suitable. To. And that is how the stress comes in. You have no outlet. You can't vent. Thankfully, it didn't happen to me. I opened an academy and I'm blasting people. I'm running. I'm every, doing everything. So I'm giving vent to all my stresses I have. Mm. Uh, I have started this academy, and uh, my God, I have. Picked up fights everywhere. It was very difficult to adjust with people. Okay. So actually, I can relate this to Nana Patel's Prahar movie. Yeah. I think that was what was shown there is actually true. Yeah. So had you, I'm sorry, uh, had you called me two years before when I just retired, <coughs> and when I walked in, I found an empty hall. Before I came in, I would have walked out. <laughs> See my adjustment now. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was the first one to walk in, and uh, when I found, so you know, it is. It is not a false ego. It is not an alter ego. <clears throat> but yes, there is something that you need recognition. It is just how you've been uh, brought up. So, no. uh, so you you want life. things to happen at a particular time in a particular fashion in a particular mm -hmm. manner, mm -hmm. and then it's not happening. Nobody is listening to you. You're an old haggard sitting at one corner of the house. <clears throat> you get food in your time. Uh, that's it. You're left to fend for yourself, and that is how these things play. So, do you think that uh, detachment, as we talk a lot about detachment, yeah. could detachment be one of the solutions, or probably just a step towards uh, getting into so you're, you're talking about something like spiritualism. Mm -hmm. You're talking something like mm, the mind over the matter, or yeah. mind dispensing kind of thing. Yeah. So, you are like uh, you want to go more into spiritualism, not more into uh, see uh, detachment. In Sam, hmm. uh, when you have taken birth and through your entire journey till a particular age, because you have parents, you are attached to them. Because if you have brothers and sisters, you get attached to them. Hmm. You got married, you get attached to your wife. Your girlfriends like me, you get attached to them. <laughs> okay. So you have children, you get attached to those. Yeah. And when you get detached, either you have expectations or the people whom you get attached to their expectations. Hmm. So, I would not say detachment. It is lessening of the expectations that you must exercise more. You can't detach. It is then to imagine that you are bad. Because only you are detached. It is only that time only you can be detached. You become a very sadhu. You physically you can't detach. Any person who says that I detach, no. You lessen your expectations. I think that is one form of detachment. If I expect that I should do this. Accept people as they are, and that is how people are going to accept you as. Wow. That is the that is to to this day, if I have ever received the most beautiful definition of detachment, it has to be this. That detachment is rather lessening your expectations of other people, and that is how you know that okay, the world is a beautiful yeah. place. Because then you start like yeah, so you will buy small small things which you don't expect. Yeah. Or maybe not kidding. So you know that okay. So yeah. So I'm I'm known as a karu. Sir, how do you like increase or develop your mental resilience? Like if you have challenges in life, you have to overcome them. Yeah. Then how do you like keep your work life, personal life? Okay. 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 How do you keep the personal life, work life separate and how do you develop your mental resilience? Yes, a very, very uh, good question. How do you increase your mental resilience? You see, it is directly related to what I've been talking about, determination, willpower. You know, the only one thing that you need to tell everyone in his life, his or her life, that the best is yet to come. You've given your best, the best is yet to come. You keep telling yourself, the best, Abhi Devi, the best woman he has in the game. Understand also one thing, that the moment you start thinking about others and seeing into others' problems, your problems will start looking smaller. Because what? Mental resilience is directly related to your psychology. You need to improve your psychology first. How do you do that? If I know that I have a problem with my life, I have a problem with my life. But the person doesn't do that. 
he thinks his problem is the biggest bloody problem in the world without even being doing due consideration. So first step is look at things from a distance. Somebody else could also have a problem greater than you. You have people looking at you, your parents, your colleagues, professional, personal. What is their expectation from you? Is the best version of yourself. What is the diligence? What is the hard work? What is the effort that you are putting in both these spheres to make the world a better place for anyone and everyone who is associated with you? So, when you start looking at positives, you are increasing your mental strength. Nazar bardo, nazariya bardo. See? Definitely proven that 52% of the times in a day you think positively, your work is done, you're going into positive. Mental strength is all about positive thinking. It is directly related to your self confidence, it is directly related to your willpower. So, how do you increase your self confidence? <laughs> we all are alive today. Do we set any challenging life term goals? Anyone for that? I'll throw this question to the audience. What is your challenging life term goal? Have you even defined it? No. Have you ever challenged a fear? No. Have you ever done something which you have not never done before? So go back home. And even if your wife or some people are married, will she with you? Or roti bell never Start something new. <laughs> I've given personal examples is very wrong. 2017, second fair, I've told this in my academy also. So challenging a fear, everyone has fear of heights. Everyone wants to do something new, you see. So I went to, uh, there's a place called Neil Billing, near Patan Kho, yeah. where you do the paragliding. paragliding. So I went to inspect a particular unit, I was in a senior position. So while I was inspecting, I was looking at the mountains, the ranges, the snows, and all that. So CEO ke saath hoja boha, man bola yaar, which of those ranges? He said, sir, the Dhola Dhar. I said, what happens there? He said, sir, the World Cup has taken place in 1995 of the battle. I don't know, we will be bola, ma sir, there is a club there. I said, have you done it? He said, sir, maha se kaun ko there? I said, I want to go now. He said, what? I said, after my inspection, I want to go there. He said, you do. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I want to go. Well, I was expecting him to pause my orders. I took the pilot. There's a pilot behind you. I jumped. 37 minutes. I was in the air. March minute was not 40. You're okay. You're okay. You're okay. Something, that. <laughs> Something that I'm coming to you challenging, you know, increasing your mental strength. Challenge of you. Another thing. Never in your life, to anyone for that matter, do self negative talk. Never do negative self talk about yourself. Why? Who are you to certify that? Have you even tried it before telling that? If you speak negative about yourself, the world is seeing you, the world will talk negative about you. Why do you, why do you want to talk negatively about you? Yes, I'm trying it. Whether I do it or not, whether I am been 60% successful, 40, 30, there is a yardstick. I have done that. That's your increasing your mental strength. If you, you, it is said, living is giving, the other way also, giving is living. You know, give to others, you feel good. You know, you feel very happy. What is mental strength? Happiness. What is that hormone which is called? Serotonin. Huh? Whatever. How do you do? How do you? What is, where, where does it happen? It have all, it, your nerve center is there. You give, you, when, you, when you give to someone, you feel so good. You see, you want a traffic light, you have uh, out of your half a dozen manas that you're taking for your own, take a plug, this thing and give it, you'll feel good and you, you keep thinking of the rest of the journey. Yes, I gave a banana to that person. Or you find a note, instead of keeping it in your pocket, give it to someone. On a particular, on your birthdays or anniversaries or uh, you know anything, just distribute five chakras. You'll feel good. So it is all about garnering 
happens with it. And that is the only way that a person will uh, overcome mental, uh, you know, mental sickness, mental illness, or increase mental strength. So there are certain ways, there are many other ways. You um, need to have a good mentor who can inspire you, you from whom you can talk your heart out. Uh, then there is nothing. It is absolutely transparent to that person. It is not counsel. It is someone who is ready to listen to your hidden things also. So when somebody is giving, lending his ears to you uh, and listening to you, probably you are taking it out and somebody is giving you good solutions too. You see. So there are so many things. There is also a thing of uh, every time that you dress up well, you should look your best. Whatever occasion that be, it be uh, any occasion, uh, most of you, I'm pretty sure when you get up ready for your marriages or something and when you dress up, there's a separate bounce in your step, right? <laughs> so, yeah, so that's, that's happiness. The mental strength is directly related to happiness. Inversely related to every other negative thing that you do. So that is all, the whole thing is all in the mind. You have to think, you have to face it. That is, these are some of the ways that you use your mental strength. Great. Thank you.